Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our live product session on optimizing SharePoint storage. Today, we'll be taking a closer look at how you can actually make the most of it. Uh, my name is Alexandra, and I'm a product design lead here at Syskit. And today, I will be joined by Daniel, our product manager. And I'm really thrilled that we are also joined by one of our dear clients, Scott Dyer, a senior director of IT at the Ovedi Group. Hello, guys. Yep, perfect. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. So here's what we prepared for you today. Uh, first of all, I'll talk about some of the major story challenges we identified during our research efforts. I will also briefly introduce the benefits of using Syskit Point storage management feature. That will be followed by Daniel's hands-on demo on storage management with some interesting use cases and examples. And finally, at the end, we will hear firsthand from Scott on how the Ovative Group actually tackled storage challenges and what was their experience with storage management. At the very end, finally, uh, we obviously left some time for your questions in our Q&A session. Uh, before we dive into today's topic, here is some important information for everyone. Uh, all registrants will receive a recording of this session, uh, but I do hope that you'll stick with us to the very end. Uh, we will have, as I told you, Q&A session at the end of the webinar, so hear how you can utilize it. Please use the Q&A function that is on the right-hand side of the interface to ask any questions, but also don't be shy. Please share your thoughts, experiences, uh, everything regarding storage that's really important to us. As you know, all of your inputs truly are guiding our journey here at Syskit. So let us know your current challenges so we can address them in the future and share any experiences you have related to the topics we discussed. Many of you on the session already know us as a company, but for those of you who don't, let me briefly introduce you to Syskit. Uh, we are a software development company founded 15 years ago. We are creating innovative and high quality and easy to use solutions for M365 and SharePoint. And we are currently trusted by more than 3,800 customers around the world, some of which you are seeing on this slide. So finally, let's dive into our topic of the day, storage challenges. So the current digital landscape uh, has a really, with an increased adoption of, of N365 services, has led to kind of an unparalleled uh, growth in data. And as we know, data is truly an invaluable asset, but it also brings some significant challenges in terms of storage growth, which is resulting in a noticeable rise in storage management issues among our users. So the first step in our research, research phase was actually establishing the assumption that you are just seeing on the screen, that there is an increasing storage management problem within our user base. So with the diversification of data sources and the lack of standardized practices on data storage uh, in the M365 ecosystem, obviously, identifying the storage consumption patterns is a really tedious and often, I would even say, impossible task for most of the organizations because IT departments find themselves blindsided by unexpected storage costs as they are struggling to manage data sprawl across different departments. As you know, leaving the sprawl uncontrolled is leading to making data unorganized, really hard to find, which is decreasing the productivity, but it is also leading to higher costs organizations are putting in cloud storage today. And since a lot of organizations have a low level of document management maturity, any possible restrictions you could enforce might actually negatively impact your employee productivity and even increase security and compliance risks. And finally, as SharePoint is becoming a primary storage location for many, I believe all of you on this session, understanding storage consumptions, predicting the future needs for your company and taking necessary actions to optimize storage has never been more crucial. But before I continue with my talk, I would really like to hear you guys early on. So I would like to ask you, what are your biggest storage challenges at the moment? We will now send you a poll so looking at your answers the very majority of you is actually saying that there is a lot of unused content you need to get rid of and that you are looking to optimize your costs so let's see how you can actually do this and how can we help all right back to our presentation 
So what does a modern day, let's say, IT admin actually wants when it comes to SharePoint storage? First of all, obviously, to prevent any unwanted costs. By monitoring the storage consumption patterns you're seeing, by doing capacity planning, by implementing certain governance policies around it, and by focusing on training and awareness. Second, you want to make the most of the storage that is already included in your license. And all of that should result from your uh, efforts in trainings and raising awareness within your end users. And finally, you want to do it all while keeping the business running smoothly. So you want to make sure there are no interruptions and that your policies are not negatively impacting the business in any way. And one of the first things that we learned is that there is a general lack of end user training and understanding of what should be kept where which is often resulting in decreasing efficiency and many duplicates and file versions that are taking up your storage. So this is a quick cheat sheet that we prepared for you to let you know how you can educate your end users on what goes where. So OneDrive for business is great when there is just one person or a small group of people working on a document in its early or beginning stages. So the person is not worrying about sorting files, sharing them widely, but if they start passing around documents to a lot of people that dealing with some uh, critical business stuff or needing some structured organizations, OneDrive is not the best fit. That's when we are actually approaching Teams. So Teams is ideal when your document is ready to be shared with a broader group of people, like an internal team or uh, people that are uh, working together on a certain project. The chat and channel setup is making collaboration really easy in Teams. But as your document collection grows, Teams can get cluttered, making it tough to find what you need. And it's not really the best for the long-term storage or locking down some final documents. For those cases, SharePoint might be a better bet for the team-focused document work. So finally, SharePoint shines when it comes to securely storing a large number of documents for the long haul and the finalized documents as well. You can leverage uh, document libraries, you can leverage content types and metadata columns, you can neatly organize and categorize your content and ensure that as your document collection grows, users can still find what they, what they need without any troubles. And that leads us to the three main challenges that we identified. The first one, knowledge, is the one that we just tackled. And the other one, and this is a big one, is if our users are short on storage or they're running out of it, they're just buying more. Because there is this sense of urgency, not to even say maybe panic. Uh, I remember from a, a lot of our calls, people saying, I feel like my hands are literally tied. There are no other options, but just keep adding storage as we are running out of it. Because if you do surpass your available SharePoint storage, your operations are limited until additional storage is purchased. So you're directly impacting that business as usual, which we mentioned on the previous slide. So naturally, even though people knew about the problem, no one really raised any issues when it came to getting extra storage. That was just how things went or even go still. And since people are uh, not even notified about tenant running out on storage, they needed to act quickly and buy more. We'll talk a bit more about this notifications in the next few minutes. Additionally, another issue is if you're getting uh, a storage from a reseller, the process is even harder since you need to send an email to someone to buy it for you. It's really time consuming and it's happening in a situation when you really don't have time. Uh, another thing we'll learn is, I don't know if you experienced the same, but a lot of our clients, when they were migrating to SharePoint online, they just sort of moved everything. So it's really tricky to optimize because some customers had data that is more than 12 years old on their SharePoint online. And it was one of the recurring problems. And even if they didn't have all the details about what was actually there, interestingly, uh, they were aware of the issue, but the business never really objected to getting more storage. So typically, as any of us would do, if we are giving the money, we would just take the easier patch, follow the trend and buy additional storage. And that was a standard practice and is, I believe, as well. 
However, every single thing we spoke with wanted the ability to proactively optimize storage without affecting their day-to-day -day operations, because they do know, they're aware that it will become a topic of objection sooner or later, and they want to be prepared for when it happens. And finally, file versions. They are taking up a lot of space and end users and even admins are either not aware of it or not aware to what extent these file versions are taking up your storage. And this is because SharePoint creates by default a new version of each document modified and then keeps the old version of the document in history for security and uh, backup reasons. And the new version has the same size or it's even larger, obviously, to make some edits. So even if you are, as an admin, aware of them, uh, deleting them through Admin Center is really a tedious process since you have to do it file by file, I think even version by version, or you need to create PowerShell scripts to do the job for you. And at the moment, the number of available versions is set up on individual library level, which is making it really hard for our IT teams to uh, maintain. So these are the three main challenges, but let's just quickly focus or actually dive deeper to the key pain points we, why we identified, sorry. So one of the first thing that popped up on, I think all of our calls was that there are customers uh, do not get a notification when their tenant is close to its limits. So they're not informed about it in any way. And why is that happening? Because Microsoft is only notifying global admins when the tenant is running out of storage. And because of this, and most of the organizations actually do not check those global admin emails, or maybe they don't even have one, which is also a usual case since many GA accounts are not mail enabled, there is really a high risk about this information not being delivered at all. And it's a really vital one. So the only way to find out if your tenant is low on storage is actually to log into the SharePoint Admin Center every single day to check where you're at. Uh, I believe I also remember that some of our customers were saying they were actually booking meetings to themselves like on a monthly or a bi-weekly basis telling let's um, this day you need to check your SharePoint storage. So it's a really manual process. And this was definitely one of the main concerns that was there and something that we decide, decided we need to address very quickly. Secondly, uh, the second problem is the lack of centralized reporting where you can actually easily identify what is there, what is taking up the most of your storage, uh, which settings you have applied on your sites, like site storage quotas, etc. And a lot of the setup information is currently scattered around different admin centers. So the IT team finds it really hard to understand what are the storage quotas per site? Are there alerts being sent to site owners? At what percentage are those alerts sent? Uh, what is the amount of versions they are keeping on certain sites and so on? And obviously when you're in the dark about your data and you can get a timely warnings about running low on storage, the only option is to grab more storage when you're about to run out, which is actually what we talked about previously. Managing file versions. So to put it simplest, simple, every edit creates a new file. And as more versions of files are created and stored in your tenant, they can quickly accumulate and consume a considerable amount of storage space and this not only impacts the overall storage capacity, but it's also increasing the complexity of data management processes you are or you would like to enforce. Another challenge we spotted was handling data duplication. Uh, so yeah, this was a fun one because we did hear considerably different definitions of what you guys think the data duplicate is and how to identify it, starting from, okay, it's just a file that has the same name and extension to having the same name and different extensions for zip files and so on. Then uh, users want to reduce costs by moving stale content into cold storage when it's not needed on SharePoint anymore. And finally, that all organizations we talk to either in this research phase or during our early access program agree that, yes, ultimately end users should be the one to manage their own data. After all, they are the ones with the actual knowledge, operational knowledge. They know whether they need some files or not. 
but at the point where we are at we need something quick something where we can do some proactive deletion immediately all right so those were the findings that pushed us to focus on this first three key problems from the get-go. For us, that meant focusing on the enhancement of notifications to make sure that any user you want can be aware of where and when their storage is running low. Also reporting, which meant uh, giving IT teams a better view of what's happening in their tenant and finding those easy wins they can clean up without messing or disrupting uh, routine operations within their organization. And finally, not only showcasing files with many versions, but giving you the opportunity to clean, access, or old file versions in seconds. And to counteract these challenges, uh, our product, uh, Syskit Points uh, team, sorry, has developed a comprehensive storage management solution. So this functionality is not just about providing visibility into storage metrics, but also about facilitating the proactive management. As we mentioned, we did learn that customers do not get a notification when their tenant storage is close to being full. And the first thing we implemented is the tenant storage limit policy so that you can actually have near real time configurable warnings when your tenant is going to run out of SharePoint storage. You can select who will be notified about storage consumption and at which limit. For example, at 85% or 90, 95, depending on what your needs are. On top of that, we created storage metrics reports that provide insights into storage consumption and your tenant setup. Uh, on top of this, let's call them standard concerns, such as which sites are consuming most of your storage, what sort of files are being kept there, we are also showing you what are the storage quotas per site, are the alerts to site owners enabled, at what percentage are they being sent, etc. And this is giving you more visibility into your storage to make sure you can manage it more efficiently and finally optimize the storage costs. And of course, we want you to be able to easily discover opportunities where you can free up storage without affecting the business and act on that. Uh, for example, we are showing how much storage you can save if you keep only the latest version for all files that are older than, let's say, six months, or how much could you save if you keep only the last 20 versions of, of the file. And last but not least, we are not only showing you that information, we are allowing you to act on real quick and simple to free up your storage. But Daniel will show that to you in a demo in more detail. Another interesting uh, input is the data we got from our organization so far. So we found out uh, from our clients, sorry, we found out that just by cleaning up uh, six month old file versions, they cut storage use by an average of 30%. And if they removed all the versions except the last 50 versions, which is a considerably high number, that dropped another 10%. So 40% of storage can be saved by deleting file versions you no longer need. Um, and these quick fixes that we implemented actually made quite a big dent in storage use without causing any problems in the regular operations. And this number is even higher for anyone in the media industry. We saw a lot of our clients in that industry have over 70% of their savings simply because they are using different data types. And in the last three months, since this feature is alive, we actually helped our clients save over 110 terabytes of storage. If we talk about numbers, that is over $260,000 in yearly savings, and as I already said, 110 terabytes of storage. And that is great because we uh, have had around 30 organizations that made actions with this feature so far, around 50 different users. So that's not a really high number, but the savings are really great. So without further ado, I would like to give my words to Daniel. I believe I talked enough, so let's actually see all this in action. Uh, Daniel, are you ready for the demo? Yep, sure. Hopefully you can hear me. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. So uh, thanks everyone for joining. So just to share my screen to start with, 
and then we can jump into into the into the demo session. So I'm very glad to see that there is so much interest around storage management. Uh, even though the functionality of uh, optimizations have been out for the last, uh, let's say, only three months, for us this has been, let's say, a, a, a project that we have been working on for, I believe, since July last year, somewhere around that, where we started doing some sort of analysis on our end. And as you saw with, uh, and Alex did talk about that, there was a, let's say, a lengthy discovery process to understand what actually will help our customers the best. So uh, we did discuss this briefly, and Alex already did mention it, but the first surprise that we got from this was the fact that, let's say, uh, natively you don't get some sort of admin uh, actions or let's say some sort of uh, notification. So to counteract that, we've created the tenant-wide policy for storage. And uh, how you set it up in, in Syskit Point is you can easily go into your settings and under settings, under policies, you have your tenant-wide uh, storage limit uh, policy. And here, uh, obviously on our demo tenant, we have uh, put this to 25%, but uh, usually uh, by default, this is on, on 85% and you can customize this however you want. So this will en enable you to, let's say, act quicker and to give yourself, uh, let's say, enough time to act uh, or maybe analyze internally what actually you should be doing and not just to go into that mode of, of uh, buying additional storage when it's, when it's actually too late to act. So uh, this is one thing. The other thing is uh, you can decide who actually gets notified about this. By default, it's Syskit Point administrators, but you can also add any sort of custom recipient here if this person needs to be uh, notified about, about this challenge. So uh, by doing this, uh, as with many policies that we uh, have already, uh, what, your, uh, let's say what you will be receiving is an email. And this email looks something like this. So in this case, uh, I can see that uh, my tenant is using more than X percent. So this is the amount of that I have actually uh, set up on my tenant, how much I'm using, and actually I can see more details here. So if I go into this email, I will uh, actually end up within Syskit Point where I can do additional things. So what I can do here is, uh, let's say I can go into and say, okay, uh, what's, what's, what's my next step? So I can view the report immediately from this and start optimizing. So this is, let's say, how you can uh, immediately see what's, what's the impact and what are the biggest sites here, what's the storage limit, but we'll talk more about that once we get to this report. Uh, let's say the other things that, uh, let's say, as all of our uh, policies do, is it's not just about sending out emails, it's also about interacting within, let's say, uh, the entire Syskit point. So you can also see this vulnerability under our uh, security and compliance checks. So if you're monitoring this, uh, you have a tenant storage limit policy that actually triggered a violation. And in this case, you can also see what, uh, what your percentage is uh, right now, and you can act upon that if once you log in into Syskit point. Uh, other than that, uh, it's also linked to the storage tile. So here you have a, let's say, completely uh, separate storage tile where we see, okay, you have be, you are using more than what you have set up. In my case, this was 25%, so this has popped up as a warning here. And I can immediately see that this is currently red and what are my uh, largest sites that I should maybe start optimizing. But if I want to have more information, I can go and uh, view all. And once I do that, I'll uh, immediately see, let's say, the report that gives me the, uh, let's say, uh, information about how my storage was, was growing over time. And uh, let's say you can even see here on this report when we started preparing for, for this uh, demo. So you can see when we started pumping data within, within our demo session, uh, within our demo tenant. Also, uh, what you can see here is, um, let's say, within this report, as Alex was, was mentioning, is you can see the entire uh, setup of your uh, tenant, uh, which is related to storage. So you can see what sites have storage limits, what are those storage limits, uh, at what percentage the sites are currently on, and is the alert set up, and at what percentage. Uh, so this is, let's say, at one place, you can get all of this information. And here, uh, let's say, I can see if I take a closer look at that, let's say this site here has a tenant uh, limit 
for 25 terabytes. This is the default uh, limit. So this uh, actually, this uh, team doesn't have uh, some sort of a, a limit set to it. So I can go uh, here and immediately change the storage limit to whatever I want. So in this case, I would like this to be 25 gigabytes and I want it to be notified at 95%. So this is okay. And once I confirm this, uh, let's say this will update and also it will update the percentage on where my uh, site is at. So I can uh, do this in bulk. So if I wanted to do some, uh, some actions for multiple um, sites or teams, I can do this also in bulk for all of them. So it's a bulk action like most of the actions that we have within, within uh, Syskit Point. So we can do it immediately from the report. The other things that you can uh, Im uh, learn from, from uh, the tenant-wide report is, for example, uh, in this case, what I can see immediately here is that uh, the biggest site that is uh, consuming my storage is the learning portal. So what I can go here is I can click deeper into this one and see, okay, what's what's on this site? So this is a learning portal. This is something that uh, has most of the uh, ty file types here are videos. So, okay, these are videos, but going into deeper here, I can see that all of these videos have some sort of multiple versions. So I believe we would all agree that for videos, you don't need as much versions. So here easily i can just go in and say okay i want to remove all of the file versions and just keep the latest one so if i do this action in bulk uh, i can select if i want to permanently delete all of the latest versions but the uh, all of the versions but the latest one or i want to move them to recycle bin so I permanently delete and just put clean up and this will delete all of the versions and just keep the latest one other than that um, here uh, what you can see is that this site, when it comes to cleaning up uh, unnecessary file versions, looks more or less okay. So there are no files that are above 20, uh, 20 versions or no versions that are, uh, late, let's say, older than, than, than six months. The other example that we often saw when we were discussing this with, with uh, our clients and the other organizations is that there might be some sites like this one where we have mark 8 project so where it's at 100 percent so and how how could this happen so there was a site that actually uh, went to 100 percent and what i can see here now when i have this visibility is that this site actually doesn't have an alert so what i can do here is i can immediately rem remediate this by just going into this uh, uh, storage limit part and adding an alert so i can say okay please alert me when this comes to i don't know 90 percent and if i do that uh let's say the alert will immediately uh change and i can also add additional storage to this so i can change the limit to be 250 gigabytes and once i do confirm this again this will all update and you will see market project now being at 10 percent of its quota and not at 100 percent. so i have uh, quickly added more storage or let's say i have changed the quota for this site just uh, let's say on the on the uh, on the screen so going deeper into this because it's actually uh, it 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 makes sense to go deeper into this team and to understand what's what's causing this 25 gigabytes there so if i go into it what i can see here is yeah uh, this site uh, linking back to what alex was saying there aren't many file versions here. So you can see all of 1, 1, 11. Uh, so some of these files, uh, let's say there are just latest file versions. So someone who is actually maintaining this site has been doing a, a very good job on uh, for that. But uh, on a closer inspection, uh, I can see that there are maybe some potential duplicates here. So Azure Fundamentals here and Azure Fundamentals here. So if I just quickly sort by this column, I can identify if there are other duplicates here. And uh, if this site has a lot of these duplicates, potential duplicates, I can uh, export this report, send it to the owner of this site and say, okay, hey, uh, you might have some sort of, a lot of duplicates on, on your site. Are, are they actually needed? So they, those people that, that are the owners can actually go in and, and remove those uh, files if they are no longer needed. So this is not something that uh, obviously you as a, an admin can decide if this is a duplicate or not. As Alex was mentioning, there is a lot of different definition what a duplicate is, but at least you can understand that there are potential duplicates on this site and you can discuss this with your with the owners of these sites and say, okay, 
uh, can you remove these files if they are actual duplications? So on this side, we have um, some sort of duplicates, but uh, again, looking at the file version cleanup, there isn't much that I can recoup. This is not something that is usually the case because usually what we see is that uh, sites look like this. So when, when we talk uh, to, this, uh, uh, to, to our clients, sales and marketing sites, um, some sort of design sites, they are always, uh, let's say, filled with versions. So going into our sales and marketing site here, I can immediately see that there are some presentations, which is usually the case, that grow from a couple of megabytes to a couple of tens of thousands of gigabytes, uh, ten, tens of thousands of megabytes, or let's say uh, tens of uh, gigabytes in that case. Uh, and this is somewhere where I can make uh, some sort of quick actions as an admin. So on, on something like this, uh, this file version cleanup tile here is something that comes very, very handy. So here you can see that I can recoup out of this 20 gigabytes that I have on this site, I can recoup, uh, let's say nine megabytes by um, removing all the file, file versions. But if I focus on uh, the late, uh, let's say last 20 file versions, I can then uh, remove almost, uh, let's say ab above 16 gigabytes. So this is what 80% uh, of the entire site just by doing this one action. If I don't feel comfortable removing all of the versions, uh, let's say that are, uh, let's say just keeping the last 20 versions, I can even change this. If you click on this here, uh, you can update this to say, okay, what would be the situation if I kept the last 50 versions? So in this case, if I save this and go back, uh, I, this number would immediately uh, update. And then I say, okay, last 50 versions is okay. Uh, this is something that I, as an admin, can do without affecting the business. I can click on the cleanup, and then uh, this action would actually delete all of the file versions that are here uh, and that are not the latest 50 versions. So this is the action that we've seen, uh, let's say, our customers benefiting most from. And uh, this is how some of our organizations have actually uh, cleared more than more than 40% of their storage by using these file version cleanup actions on the sites that are actually um, consuming the most storage. So with that being said, um, the latest thing, that, the last thing that I want to show you is the six months or, or the older versions. So um, if I focus on, on the design site, here the, the, the situation is a bit bigger because uh, this design site has a more, let's say, file versions that are older than, than six months. So you can decide which of these actions you want to perform. So here I can recoup 10 gigabytes with uh, file versions older than six months or 12, uh, 12 gigabytes if I focus on the latest uh, 50 versions only. So uh, with that being said, uh, there is what we found uh, from all of the discussions with our clients, going back to, let's say, older file, file versions is very beneficial because there is very low probability that someone will need to go back to a version that is older than six months or older than a year. And again, you can customize this as you want. So if I want to go and say, okay, I want to focus only on versions that are older than 12 months or 10 months, you can customize this and the numbers will again update and the actions will be focused on the number that you have entered here. So in this case, if I said 10 months and go back uh, to this, it will update the numbers and these numbers actually are now uh, representative of what you can do in, uh, with, with the actions that are, uh, with the versions that are older than, than 10 months. The other things that you can do here is you can immediately focus on some of the file types that are here. So all of, uh, let's say the report here is actually searchable so you can go through it. And if you want to, for example, understand which are those files that have more than, I don't know, 50 versions, uh, you can just go here and say, okay, I just want to see what are those files that have more than 15 versions and update it. And this will show you only those files. And you can discuss with your end users if, if they need to do anything about that. It's, let's say, very fast and it will help you understand, give a, a better insight into what are those files that actually need some sort of cleanup. So this is it. Uh, so uh, hopefully you have some questions. We'll get back to that uh, during the Q&A time. So now uh, I'll just hand over to Alex for, for the presentation again. 
Thank you, Daniel, for the interesting demo. I can definitely confirm that designers do have a lot of versions. Uh, so yeah, moving on to the final part of our today's session is the customer interviews. So Scott, are you ready for our questions? I'm ready. Can you hear me? Perfect. We can yep. hear you. Awesome. Great. Okay. So um, thanks again, Scott, for joining us today. Uh, we are, as I said, very, very delighted to have you here so that you can share your story uh, with, let's say, all of our attendees. So just going back maybe to our first conversation, I believe it was back in August 2023, uh, yeah. and we had a couple of follow-ups after that. Uh, we did discuss some of the moments that stood out from that, but from, I believe from one of your calls, you actually said that you are not getting notified about this, and this was kind of the trigger point, the, in, the insight for us to create the first, uh, let's say, uh, end user facing storage management functionality within point, the tenant limit policy. So from your experience, can you just share a bit more? Uh, what's, what was your experience working with us uh, during this project? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we, yeah, we were. You know, we don't we don't set limits per site. Um, so basically, I would just need to uh, proactively just check how our overall limit was running uh, or our usage was running against our limits, and um, hope that I caught it before we filled up. But uh, too often, it would fill up on a weekend or something, and then Alex, to to your point. I'd have to reach out to our CSP to try to get more storage, and um, and that often was not resolved quickly. So, pretty painful. Um, so yeah, you know, I've I've always appreciated that anytime I've reached out to Syskit, um, you know, it, sharing my our pain points and just sort of our just what we desperately need help with, um, how open uh, you folks have been to uh, listening and really understanding our issues and. Um, you know, I've, I'm, I'm just, I'm just so happy to have this functionality um, and and for it to to be, uh, you know, brought to market so so quickly after, um, you know, letting you know about about this problem we were having. Awesome. So I believe Alex already mentioned this, but so we when when we talked to different organizations during our discovery, uh, this was kind of uh, one of their key pain points. So they said they basically feel like they have no other option about adding other yeah. storage when it kind of runs out. So I believe you yeah. also mentioned something like this. So can you give us a bit more insight how, how it looked be before and uh, how, how has this changed with storage management now? So uh, mm -hmm. how, how has this impacted your day-to-day -day operations, weekly operations? So just a bit more insight into that. Yeah, yeah, so for sure. I mean, our, you know, our process over the last three or four years is just keep keep monitoring our usage and when it gets close to its limit just keep adding storage because we just could not find any sort of efficient way to deal with it uh, for sure our business was not gonna to, you know tolerate us saying like oh you can only have so much storage per site you need to spend hours every week finding old stuff and deleting it or like this, it was just wasn't going to fly, right? We were just everybody's too busy. Everybody needs to focus on actually delivering work, and um, so the only option was to just keep increasing storage. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so you know, for us now, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Like I'm I'm you know I'm I'm using you know I've already used uh, the new tools that you provided to to clean out. Um, Again, you know, it's just incredible how much storage is just eaten up by versions that really no one needs. Um, so we've been very aggressively using both the, you know, the age-based and the and the file version-based um, tools to just to clean out old versions. Um, and uh, it's going great so far. I can, you know, I we're, we're going to keep doing that, and I anticipate that it will enable us to avoid adding storage for for a very long time. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and just uh, out of curiosity, so I believe a lot of our attendees are curious to understand how often do you actually use this, how much time you spent uh, oh, sure. by using, <laughs> let's say, uh, this functionality, and how much have you actually uh, managed to clean up with with uh, storage management? Sure. Yeah. So we we just, um, I mean, it was it was wonderful timing. This this feature uh, rolled out just prior to our annual renewal uh, with our Microsoft uh, licenses. Um, 
so it was a perfect opportunity to, you know, I, I looked at the what the renewal was going to be on storage and it was twice as much as it was 12 months ago. Um, and, and I was just like, I this is such a waste of money. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just, you know, spent, I, you know, it wasn't a lot of time, but I just spent on and off some time over the week prior to the renewal. Um, you know, it couldn't have been more than an hour or so just going through our sites. Um, you know, using the tool again to just sort of look at old versions um, and clean them out. Um, and it was, it was not, it was not time consuming. And, you know, we were able to, I, I don't, I don't remember the numbers I gave you. I think they're in the case study there, but, um, you know, I think it was like, was it twenty twenty thousand $20,000 worth of storage costs um, in, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, an hour or two of just using your tool. Um, so yeah, I mean, for now, I you know what I what I see here, what we'll do over over um, the coming year is you know I have the I have the alerting set up for um, the overall tenant. So I think anytime I hit that threshold, I'll just go back in um, and use those tools again to just just do a cleanup, you know, a little bit of cleanup here and there. I I don't see it being something that'll be time consuming at all. Um, it's it's a huge huge win. So appreciate it. Awesome, awesome. So uh, as we wrap up, uh, what's what's the message that you want to leave kind of our attendees with about storage management or any other insights about Syskit or Syskit Point? So that's kind of just a final message for everyone. Yeah, I mean, this, <laughs> this is one of those tools that, that pays for itself, right? Um, like the the value you get from from saved costs will, will pay for the investment in this tool. So, um, you know, if you're facing this sort of challenge, like, you, you got to do. You gotta, you sh there's no reason you you wouldn't invest uh, in this tool. So I highly recommend it. Thanks. Awesome. So uh, to everyone else on this call, we'll link the let's say a case study that uh, Ovative did with us. So this has just uh, gone live a couple of days ago. So you can read more about this and feel free to kind of reach out to us and just to understand a bit more. I see there are a lot of questions in the questions pane, so we'll try to answer them after we go through this all, but if we do not get the time to do all that, we'll for sure reach out to everyone in in uh, in the emails. So, yep. Okay, so moving forward, thanks, Scott. So, thanks for this. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much again for taking the time. And yeah, as Daniel told you, we will hand out the case study with the exact numbers we couldn't think of right now. Uh, okay, so moving on with our presentation, we're almost at the end. We just wanted to share what's next. So Daniel, if mm -hmm. you could please continue with yep. this. No problem. So uh, let's say, as you know, uh, our storage optimization and the entire storage management functionality is live for, let's say, three months. So. Uh, there is still a lot of good things that will come, uh, maybe some uh, that Scott will even like. So automated version enforcement. So this is something that will allow you to set some sort of uh, enforcement that you can say uh, any site, any file cannot go over X amount of versions. So this will be automatically handled by Syskit Point. And uh, this is something that we, we will be working on very, very soon on. Also, uh, something that we've he heard a lot from our customers is the archival of unused content. Uh, also, I believe in this, um, in the yeah, poll that we did at, at the beginning, yeah, uh, stale content was one of the uh, key issues. So um, as we all know, Microsoft is coming out with uh, their functionality to archive, uh, store, uh, let's say unused or storage to, or let's say sites to some sort of, some sort of uh, cold storage. So we will definitely be using uh, that functionality and enabling that through Cisco points. Uh, and understanding more about what data duplication is uh, and how we can help with that. And the last but not least, um, collaboration and how we can actually delegate this to the end users so that they can help you with managing their own sites and the storage on their sites. So this is something that uh, we will also be working on, uh, let's say, for, for storage management. These are just some of the, let's say, high level uh, top functionality, there is going to be a lot of optimizations, a lot of uh, smaller fixes, a lot of different views of the reports. So uh, stay tuned and uh, this is something that we will be investing a lot in for, for this year. So that's that's kind of the message here. Syskit point, uh, sto storage management is, is, is going to be a hot topic. So uh, if you liked what you saw here, uh, if you 
uh, want to know more, so feel free to register for a 21 day free trial. So there is, let's say, uh, no obligation from your side. So you just need to connect your tenant and you can see all of this in live. So you can try to uh, see how this will help you uh, within within uh, your organization. So you can go in and just try this for your own. Feel free to reach out to any one of us uh, at, I don't know, feedback at siski.com uh, or to the sales team at sales at uh, siski.com so that we can guide you through this on your own tenant and we can show you maybe uh, what's the bi biggest impact on your tenant will be. So that's, that's the message here. And uh, now it's time for the Q&A. So um, I've seen a lots of questions. So maybe Alex, if we can just briefly go through them. Do anything that you we have... uh, don't make it, uh, we will uh, certainly uh, reply via email. So mm -hmm. uh, the first one I'm seeing is: uh, Are my end users uh, having access to these reports? Mm -hmm. So. Yes, so as with everything within Syskit Point, you can enable your organization uh, or your end users to have access to their own site. So all uh, the reports that we've seen here, uh, they can do uh, themselves, uh, also the actions, they can do themselves, uh, but on the limited view that they have. So only where they are owners, they will have this ability to optimize their own storage. So this is already already something that your end users can do. Right. The second one is actually something that we didn't get to show you in this demo. So can you delete minor versions per file or selection from within the tool or does the owner of the file have to do this? You showed deleting all older versions, but in some conditions you want to select on which files to perform this. Yes. So uh, there are, let's say, uh, the ability to go into uh, the file and delete the file version. So we haven't shown that in the demo, but there is an additional drill that you can do. So you can click into every file that you want and delete versions, especially those versions. So it's 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 a bit of a, let's say a more detailed view of of the action that uh, you can do from from the site level. But you actually can go into each file and delete those versions that that you have there. So it's it's one step below the site level. So that's also possible. All right. Then can Syskit provide some sort of road trend insights on site level, but for mm -hmm. the entire plant? Yep. Uh, so um, again, going back to the roadmap. So this is something that we are actually currently working on. So uh, some of the next steps that you will see on the, on the tenant wide report uh, is that you will be able to see what the growth for each site has been. So maybe this is something that will uh, that you would like to use as a point of reference to start cleaning. So we've heard that a lot from uh, many organizations that they want to understand what the growth is for a certain site. And then based on that, see if, if uh, they need to some, if they need to perform some cleaning actions on let's say the content that has been loaded there or many versions that have been generated in a short amount of time. So this is something that we are currently working on. All right. Uh, then we have a question about the roles that we're using. So how is Syskit Point integrated with M365? What app permissions do we need to do what it does? Does it need the global admin role or mm -hmm. global role? So role? Yeah, uh, for connecting your tenant, you will need a global admin just to connect and basically for us to get all of these information. After that, uh, there are some delegated permissions as well as, uh, let's say, permissions that uh, we do require to uh, get this. But everything, uh, I believe it's, it's better maybe for, for us to get back to this question in an email to, to provide a, let's say, more comprehensive, uh, let's say, answer about all of the permissions that, that are necessary. But all of these permissions are something that you would need to consent during the, let's say, um, rollout or the connect connection of your tenant so we use those permissions to do to do these actions on on your organization and all the other roles uh, definitely yep. require an email answer for this one i agree so we will get back to you uh all right so here is a thank you for a great presentation no problem sorry i just lost that question let me get back to it um 
Okay, my company is running a large tenant with 100k plus SharePoint and Teams. Overall, we have one petabyte of storage with 45% used. We are very concerned by storage increase and I would like to know if Syskit can handle such a large tenant. So currently we do have organizations that are, let's say, um, even, I believe, a couple of petabytes of data. Uh, this is something that um, you are able to understand through Syskit Point. So, but it would be more more beneficial if these use cases for these larger organizations that we maybe do not go into the trial, uh, or let's say this uh, trial that that we are having right now, so that you maybe contact ourselves, or ourselves will contact you to understand what, uh, let's say, how best to implement the entire solution for you, uh, as it will require most probably some sort of tweaking of the resources that are necessary for for this to to work. Uh, as fast as it is on smaller tenants, so it will uh, it will support it, but it's something that we will need to take a closer look and and maybe guide you through this process again. Okay, great. Uh, the other one is uh, how can I identify my stale uh, sorry sites with a lot of unused content? Mm -hmm. So again, uh, maybe going back uh, again to the roadmap, we are uh, building a new report that will actually uh, give you this information. So far, what you can do is on the site level, uh, once you go into the site level report, there is the last activity uh, column, and you can filter based on the last activity to understand what uh, files on that site are actually uh, unused or have been used, uh, let's say, long ago. So you can do that on a site level. What we are doing right now is we will uh, provide you with a report where you would actually be able to say, okay, I want to have, uh, give me all of the sites that have content older than four, four, four years. So you would be able to get that in one report and you would be able to, to focus on those sites a, a bit easier. Okay, great. Now we have a few uh, regarding the cost. So how much uh, does this feature cost? In which edition are we getting this at? So mm -hmm. a few to address regarding this matter. Yeah, so uh, storage management uh, with the optimization ag uh, actions is included uh, within our governance package. So uh, I don't understand, uh, or maybe don't have the information about how big your organization is at the moment, but it's best maybe to uh, go to our pricing page, see if this, uh, let's say, shows you the price for, uh, for the governance package. If not, uh, what we can do is we can contact you afterwards just to see your information and, and provide a quote for this, how, how, it would, how much it would cost for you to get uh, storage uh, management within Cisco Point. All right. I don't think we're going to make it with all the questions, but this is the one yep. for the end. I think it's it's a good one. So uh, once again, thank you for interesting presentation. A quick query is, even as a fact that the growing of site or storage is increasing massively, what should be our very first action after monitoring as a best practice? Mm -hmm. I think so I yeah, we did cover this, uh, I believe, during the demo. Uh, what What we see as the biggest impact is actually going in, uh, focusing on those largest sites that you have and cleaning up all of the old versions. So with, with old versions, as Alex did mention during the presentation, on average, organizations can save more than 30% of their storage. So just by cleaning up old versions. So th these are versions that are not, most probably it, no one is going to get back to them. So 30% based on that, and then if you want to save even more you can focus on on the last 50 versions last 20 versions so and get i don't know 10 15 percent uh even more on that so but the first step uh what we always recommend is focus on the age of the versions because this is this is the least impact that you can do to your business and the great uh savings that you can have there great Thank you once again. We will do our best to answer the rest of the questions as soon as possible and to send you guys out any, everything you ask for a handout. So the, the we already did send you something here, but in the follow-up email, along with this recording, you will receive everything else. Um, yeah, I believe that's it for today. Thank you uh, very much for all to all our attendees. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Scott, once again for taking time to talk to us today. And yeah, I believe that's all. Here are our contact info if you want to write to us for any matter and take care. Thank you. Thanks everyone.